Okay, take two. Filmed quite a bit of the first one. Turns out the microphone wasn't working. Had to reboot the phone. Anyway, that's not why you uh, why you're here. This is a review of this bike. This is my new Carrera Crossfire E 2.0. Um, and this is an e-bike of course. The last one I had, which I sold when I got this, was the Carrera Crossfire 2. This is my third Carrera. I uh, can't remember the one I had before that, back in 2008 I think I got it. Uh, but they, they've all been fantastic bikes. Minor changes each time. The chassis looks a bit different on this one, probably due to the weight of the battery um, and other things. As you can see there, the, the battery is mounted sort of centrally there and the motor is in the rear hub and this works really well actually it leaves the front wheel feel a bit light which isn't too bad uh, if you go on a ride um, near a promenade and you go through any very soft sand then you do notice uh, you know the wheel wants it will go wherever it wants to go practically um, and of course these sort of road tires here um, don't help with stability in that sense however they do give less resistance, so it means if you're riding without power, even though the bike's a bit heavier, it's not such a big deal. The the bike itself, the weight is 22.5 kilograms with the battery, but the battery weighs 2.5k itself, so it's only 5k more with that motor on than the previous Crossfire. This is a 19-inch frame. It turned out the last one I had was a 21-inch, which is too too high for me. I'm five foot ten with a 33-inch leg. Um, and 19 inches is, is perfect apparently. Uh, the way to measure it is if you sit on your seat, take the uh, one of the pedals right down to its lowest, but in line there, roughly in line, that's in line, and put your heel on that pedal. If you, if you can straighten your leg virtually, then that's fine. If your knee is uh, bent any more than a very small amount, then you, your seat is too low. Um, and that's with your heel on the pedal, not the instep. So that when you do use your instep, then or you, the balls of your feet, then um, it's uh, you know your knees are a little bit bent, and you've got the power there that you need. The um, the f the the pannier rack there came from my other bike that didn't come with it. The stand does come with it with this bike. Didn't have to buy it. Um, it didn't come with mud guards. Uh, that thing at the front under the battery there's part of a you know a cheap set of mud guards the other one i couldn't fit it underneath that carrier so i gave it away with the other bike uh, the pump is from my other bike it's not new and it's fine that's an adaptable pump it's very good there so i might do one on accessories at some point because the um, the adapter in here oops uh, will do schrader valves and presto valves and these of course are presto valves in here um, again the saddle bag is mine you bought a while ago. Um, the, the stem on this, you can't really hire all, the stem is a fixed length and these these are spaces here if you want this thing lower then you take this, this off, take that off, move some of those spaces out of the way, put this back on again. So you can lower it but this is as high as you can go. Uh, I'm looking to get one of those angled risers. Um, you can get a longer stem to fit onto this without touching the, the bottom half there, about £15 I think they are, uh, but the riser there between 25 and 30 quid, uh, 30 quid is quite a decent one, that also allows you to raise the angle, uh, bring it slightly towards you as well as higher. Um, the mirror, uh, I sold my soul to the devil and got that from Amazon, um, it, was, it was about 10 quid or something, it's essential that you have a mirror. You need to see what's behind you, especially with you know, traffic conditions. I do not trust the motorist to ride on the pavement whenever I can. If I have to ride on the road, though, I'll... Uh, th this is from years of being a motorbiker. You, you know, you just know everybody in, in a vehicle with more than two wheels is just out there to kill you. It doesn't matter whether they've seen you or not. They'll just go for it. The uh, the gears are very good, actually. They're an, it's a nine-gear cassette down there. And Shibano gears are fine. Derailleur, obviously. Uh, the front, there's only a single cog there, so there's only, there's only one gear change to worry about. And there it is. The, um, it's, it's obviously pushed to go up and just flicked that one at the back there to go to change down. It's so easy to use, it's really nice. Uh, it's all one hand operation. The brakes I didn't realise until I'd had it for a couple of days are hydraulic. No cables to worry about. 
Apparently they may need bleeding occasionally and this, you take the top off here to access the top of the reservoir and you can top it up with brake fluid. Um, I haven't looked into that yet so I would not assume it's going to be normal car dot four or something. I'll go, I'll go and find out what, it, what the proper stuff is. And according to the guy at Halfords there, uh, you have to bleed them at some point if they get a bit soft. Um, or you get air bubbles in them. You shouldn't get any air bubbles in them. You can see how neat it is down there. There's no, no cabling coming out the back or anything. This is just the, the thing itself. And you can just about see the movement there. It's almost imperceptible. Um, but I'm quite happy with that. I like the idea of um, hydraulic brakes on this uh, because every ounce of pressure or every gram of pressure that you put on the the handle is instantly transmitted through to the brake caliper because hydraulic fluid will not compress. Um, shocks there, it's pretty standard really on these bikes now. You can you can have them locked or open there and you can set the uh, resistance by this side here. Uh, there's, don't, there's no um, no connection between those these two as far as I'm aware. There's no path for fluid or anything, so these seem to be in completely independent settings. I'm sure if I'm wrong somebody will tell me, but uh, so if this is the preload, adjusting this isn't going to make any difference to this side, I would think. Anyway, the wheels are standard, more or less standard now, 700, um, which is equivalent to about 28 inch, 700 C wheels. I blew a tyre the other day, Sorry, an inner tube, I should say. Um, I don't know whether I'd, it was going down because I'd gone over something or it, I'd hit a grid with no cover on it and it, all of a sudden it was flat, so um, I had to walk it home. Well, I decided to go to Halford, which is about an extra half mile, but we bought a care package. I bought two of these. Well, sorry, I didn't. Um, me and my fiancé bought uh, these bikes at the same time. She's got the female version, which I might do a review on at some point. Uh, it's almost similar, except for the cross frame, though, of course, which is a bit lower at the back end there on the female bike but everything else is, is almost the same uh, she's incredibly happy with it compared to the last bike she had the, which was the Apollo Metis which is, I've got a review on, well I'm going to review on it's how to change the front wheel um, the only problem with that one is it was only 20 mile range but the seating position wasn't very good uh, if you have um, back issues and things then uh, it wasn't that comfortable but the journey, you know, we were limited journey wise uh, whereas these are about a 60 mile range you never see 60 miles on the clock, you see 52 if it's fully charged. However, I was very close to zero uh, last week sometime, and I thought I'd keep on going, and I put it on red, you know, the maximum power, kept on pedaling, it was down to a mile, uh, kept on going, kept on going, I thought, come on, and then all of a sudden then it was five miles. So I'm fairly convinced there is a reservoir in this battery, which is fantastic. It's like on a motorbike, you have a reserve tank, and you know you, you run out of fuel in the middle of nowhere and you just flip it over to the reserve tank and you've got another 20k left or something so i think with this i think that's what they've done rather than show you the you know 60 mile range they show you 52 and it counts down naturally but if you you're still some you know some distance from home um and you need to get there then uh, it seems to have another five miles left in it that's a guess now that's at full power by the way once it trips up to that five miles, if you drop the power down to, to green, the, you know, the lower level, then it would be more than five miles. So, um, pretty well thought out. Uh, it's The cost of it was £1,400, and it's exactly the same for the, the women's version. And that was a very good price. We looked around. I mean, the Carrera, I've had it for that long. I've had Carreras for that long that uh, I've got every confidence in them. And it, I would take some persuading now. To get anything else, uh, I, I'm quite aware of the other, the named bikes and things. You know, two, three thousand pound and stuff. I really cannot see the point. This, this is a fantastic bike. Um, the only issue would be range, really, if you wanted something to do 200 miles or something. But I believe, and I've been looking, looking for, and I've seen, you can get uh, a converter um, that converts 12 volt car battery through your cigar lighter into 240 volts that you can plug the charger into to charge this up. This is a 36 volt battery. It runs at about 400 watts, but as you ramp up the power, it will go up to, sorry, 250 watts. It will ramp up the power to 400 watts when you need it. And that's by increasing the power level, as I'll talk about those in a sec. Um, you don't have to use the power. It's a 22 and a half kilogram bike, and you can travel along nice and comfortably on the, uh, on the straight. 
in a you know, reasonable gear, you can get some speed up. A little bit heavier than a, the ordinary Crossfire that's not electric, that's fine. Um, and if you need power, just switch the power on when you need it. Um, that way you, you can do 100 miles if you want in a trip, that's no problem at all. So um, it depends how you use it. Um, now, how you use it is an issue, and there are some things uh, to mention about this which would be useful for you. If you've never had an e-bike before, and I've heard this not just from this mate but from others too. Uh, I was out on a group ride yesterday in North Wales, around Land Dudno, and um, one of the guys there had just bought an e-bike. And the problem seems to be if they time out, now this times out after 10 minutes of no use, lack of use, and um, you're supposed to be able to just flick a switch to bring it back on. And it does, it comes on, the display comes on. You can switch it on to green or whichever power level you want. Um, I'll describe those in a sec. And uh, off you pop. The trouble is, what we found with both of our bikes, mine and my fiance's, exactly the same battery type and all the rest of it, um, the power didn't work, it wasn't there, it just wasn't there. And the um, translation of the instruction manual doesn't really help. So um, it's, we've figured out eventually what it is, is that the battery itself has an indicator and has a little green button there. Now, I thought, uh, like on these, these uh, power drills and screwdrivers, battery operated ones, you press, press that button, it tells you how much power is left in it. Well, it does, but that's actually an on-off switch for the battery and the whole system. The electrics are all stored inside here. That's where the computer is. And I believe from uh, the guy at Halfords that uh, sometimes that can overheat after a while. And this is because the, there's a, a chip in there which gets quite warm. And it has a heat sink. Now, heat, heat sink is kind of greasy material which um, uh, sort of connects the, 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 the chip that gets hot to some surrounding metalwork that helps cool it down. And that can dry out over time. So at some time, it's, it's handy, apparently, to take that off, give it a clean, put some new stuff on and uh, put it back in again. Heat sink stuff you can get from any electrical, uh, electrical component shop, I should say, something like Maplin used to, used to sell. Um, anyway, that's that issue. And also, if you put some silicone seal around that plate there, that would help seal the, the water. This is if you're kind of, you know, muddy mountain bike type person. Uh, but the way we ride it, I, I don't like actually taking this out in the rain. And I've not really done that yet, but I would do it reluctantly. Uh, same as the last bike, I'd only been out in the rain once, and that was because I got caught out in the rain. I had to get home. So it was, it was immaculate when I sold it. Um, so back to the electrics. This... <laughs> So the issue is this, there's the display, now, that's my computer there, that's not part of this, that's that, that, that just came off the last bike, I've been using this forever, and uh, I've got all my rides on Strava, or uh, IG Sport websites, which is brilliant. Um, so there's the display now for this, you can angle this up to about 30 degrees, but you, it's kind of okay there. Now, I'm going to switch this on, and this is how you do it. You, you switch it on by just pressing that half a second. You don't need any more than that. And this starts up. I'm just going to move into a shadow. So, there's the display. What the instruction book doesn't tell you is how to change the time. We figured that. Um, and that's the main display that comes on. This switch here now, this is your main control. That is supposed to be an on-off switch as well. If you switch that off, this will go off. Switch it again, it'll come back on again. The problem is, it sometimes, it, it always works. You always see this display come back on again, but sometimes the, um, the power isn't available at the motor, even though it says it is. And that's also the case nine times out of 10, if this times out through lack of use. If I'm standing here talking now for the next 10 minutes, that will shut down. And if I then, flick this orange switch again to bring it back on, which it will come on, and I can select a power level there, for example, uh, and start riding off, nothing will happen. I'll be under my own steam, the power won't help. Uh, and it turns out what you need to do is actually switch it off with the battery. Now to switch the battery off, you need to hold it. You hold this button in until the display goes out. And I'm gonna do that now. So that's just, I'm gonna press this button and hold it now. That's it, that's off. As I say, to bring it back on again, it's just a short press, which I'm going to do right now. It's a short press. So, there we are. If we now 
there's a mode button and a rocker switch. If I hold this mode button in now, that's the display that comes up the first time you use it. And this enables you to change the time, which we eventually found out. And some other things. The wheel size, I think, is set because it comes with the bike, I think. Anyway, if I exit that now, and if I hold that down again for another three seconds, what I should do now is get some trip details. There we go. Um, so the distance, well, since I last reset this, I've done 218 miles. So if I um, choose to uh, clear that data now, I can start from scratch. Uh, 23 hours <laughs> to do 216 miles, that's good. Um, maximum speed 24.7, that's probably going downhill. Uh, so I am going to clear that now, actually, so that goes back to zero. Um, the gears. These work extremely well in the sense that if, you, if you're using the power, even on low, um, if you're going along the flat or something, then um, you know, if, the, if you've got a headwind or something, it will keep you up at the maximum speed it can do, which is 15 and a half miles an hour. It won't help you over that. And that's, right about, that's gear seven. It's perfect for that speed. If you're on an incline, then you need a lower gear and possibly a higher power. But uh, at that speed, that's fine. Now, if, you, if you're going down an incline, even with the power on or whatever, you can change up to eight and nine and go as fast as you like. Uh, the power won't help you, but it will be there when you when you start to slow down again. That's how that works. Um, so just coming back to this display now. So that's the mode switch. Um, so apart from the settings that you might want to change, it does something else too. There are three three displays here. Press it. In fact, where it is now, it's showing miles. I've not got glasses on, so it doesn't matter what. But it's showing these two displays here plus the power level and the fact that it's off at the moment. Now, if I press it, uh, if I press that mode switch once, this is now the odometer for the bike. This has done 459 miles while I've owned it. Um, it's showing no miles at the moment, but that will show how many miles are left on the, on the battery. So for example, we've got 31 miles left on this, it's not fully charged. If I go to the next level, which is Tour, that's 18 miles left. If I go to Sport, that's nine miles left. And if I go to Maximum, uh, which is lunatic mode, I think, or something, uh, this, this, this will give me six miles at that setting. Um, but that's not how you use it. If you're riding along on it, I mean, you can have it off completely there and just ride it as a normal bike. And all you notice is it's slightly heavier than uh, you know, a bike without electrics. But with these tires, they're sort of road tires anyway, so it's not a lot of resistance from them. Um, so, quite often, if I'm on the way home, say, and I've you know been on a ride, and I know I'm going to get home no problem at all, I might just leave it on the uh, basic setting there, and that's fine, uh, and that works great. What you will notice, it's very clever, this. What you will notice actually, whatever incline you're pedalling along, if you're in too high a gear, the motor will cut out because it's not going to waste energy by providing a huge amount of torque. Uh, that's unnecessary and it's simply because you haven't got the right gear set so um, if that happens change down and you'll find it's, it kicks up then as soon as you change the right gear um, going up a steep hill uh, take a run up in as high a gear as you want kind of thing with uh, right on the red highest power level and as it starts to slow down change down gears progressively and eventually you'll get to a gear where it's, it's very happy just going up that hill um, as we did yesterday coming back out of land no perfect all the way up the hill it's great all at 15 miles an hour <laughs> never done that before on a bike except a motorbike um, the next display then gives you some other you know, your average speeds and uh, what your maximum speed is that type of thing uh, and then back to the the normal display how many miles you've done on this trip and of course you get the speedo there tells you what you're doing now an incredibly useful thing when i when i got this puncher uh, the other day i took it to halfords there Part of it was, I was two miles away and part of the route was uphill. I've got to be careful with this now because it's, uh, I've got to make sure to go after it. It's got a walk mode as well. And that is, let me just show you the other one first. If I hold that rocker switch up for three seconds, it turns into to sort of nighttime mode, if you like. You see this now. See that display there now has gone dark. You could use that during the day and it might save a tiny bit of power. It's hardly anything. Um, I believe you can also switch lights from this uh, if you've got them fitted. Um, but that's that's for somebody else. So I'm going to switch that back to bright again. There we go. Now, if I hold the bottom rocker down, 
you'll see a blue display it doesn't matter whether it's off or on any power mode it will go into walk mode and this came in very handy going up that incline it wants to do it at three miles an hour I walk at four normally um, my partner's got um, some issues there she, she'd find it difficult to make three miles an hour uh, and we had to use it on one hill yesterday because we got stopped by other people halfway up and he, she couldn't get the momentum going again so she used the walk function and um, she used the bike to help pull her up so she's doing about a mile and a half to two miles an hour but the bike was um, taking a lot of uh, a lot of the strain from her and it was fantastic um, so if you're out on your own with a bike with no electric you would have to push that bike up there or find some kind person to do it for you anyway i'm going to press this button now it's two or maybe three seconds and you'll see what happens it goes blue and it'll just take off you have to be careful here to stop right there we go whoa you saw four there but that's that's just a blip well it's fine it was it's speed settling down but that's the key if you're going uphill this is incredibly useful if you have to stop for any reason or if you just fancy walking up the hill um or maybe it's a hill that's too steep uh, to ride the bike up uh, and you want to take the bike up there so that you can come back down on it again um, such as people do when they're out on the, in the hills and things let's just do an extra little bit here um, because I didn't have anything about riding the thing so I've just switched the battery on I'm just taking off now um, it's in that's fifth gear or something so I'm just going to switch on to the lower power level so I don't know if you can get that mode there particularly low gear. Running out of car park there. But that was incredibly easy, it just flows so fast. Um, it takes all the it takes all the pressure off your, your muscles if you like if you're trying to uh, uh, get up a bit of speed there and you know, battling the wind or anything. So uh, anyway just leave it at that just thought I'd add that little bit in there. Uh, I'm going to turn that off again now because I need to waffle on a little bit more about something. Am I pressing the button properly? Opposite, obviously not. Here we go. That's it. Right, there we go. So that's off and as soon as I switch that back on, it'll come on and it won't be a problem. Uh, what I tend to do when I switch it on is press the mode button once and that then displays how many miles I've got left for the trip. Um, and as you saw before, if you increase the power that you're going to use, it shows you how many miles you've got left at that power level so if you've got a short hill there as part of your 20 mile trip um, and you use maximum power so it's showing you the floor there I do apologize and you use the maximum power um, then it'll uh, it, it'll be quite drastic the uh, the difference it makes and you probably think you know you don't got much much power left to get you home kind of thing but as soon as you're at the top of the hill you switch it back down to low power or no no power and it's it all comes back up again so you only use what you use to to get up the hill it's just to increase the the, the wattage to the uh, to the motor uh it's to give you that extra bit of power to get up an extra bit of torque but it's really really good we found one hill that we struggled up and had to work a little bit and that was a one in ten so one in ten hill unless you get a good run uh it it, it may struggle a little bit but a one in 12 or something uh is fine uh, one in ten is a 10 percent hill isn't it so now i came off this uh, uh well, three weeks ago yesterday yesterday was saturday um not a scratch on the bike actually apart from here because i protected the rest of it um i was going up a road with speed bumps and i was it, there were drop curbs outside every house so i'd go up the drop curb past the speed bump and go back onto the road again but the third one I went up, the speed bump was level with the drop curb almost. So I had to just come to the left and just miss the speed bump. And then I was intending to go onto the drop curb. Um, but of course the angle was so shallow at that point that the front wheel decided it wasn't going. And because it's quite light on the front, uh, it was easily kind of influenced. And because I've ridden the bike for many years, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't a death grip I had on the handlebars kind of thing. However, of course, this bike is a little bit heavier, seven and a half kilograms heavier, with a two and a half kilogram mo um, battery, uh, and a, probably a five kilogram motor by the by the sound of it. Uh, although the frame is slightly more robust on this, so um, there's, there's probably something in that that takes it slightly beyond the 15 kilogram of the other bike that I had, the Crossfire 2. 
Anyway, um, so the wheel decided to go to the right and everything else, including me, decided to go that way. And the floor was a little bit like this, it was a pavement. And I went sliding along for a little bit, so broke my finger, which is healing. Um, took a lot of skin off my hand and my, my knee and things. Uh, I could put some pictures up, but <laughs> I don't think I will. Uh, hurt my shoulder. I don't wear a hat, and I don't care what you say, I don't wear a hat. Um, I do on motorbikes because you have to. Uh, my head never touched the floor. So, um, mind you, if you get hit by a car, then your head is certainly going to hit the car. So I try not to get hit by a car, and that's why I say I don't trust cars. Uh, What's the drivers you don't trust? Um, so just be aware of that. The, the weight of this, if you're not used to the balance, it can throw you a little bit. So get used to it. Uh, take some time to get used to it. Um, it's, it's good where the weight is. And my fiance her, um, she had the motor on the front wheel on the Apollo Metis there and the battery was on the back. Uh, but that didn't work for her because it, she sometimes lost balance on that and the, uh, the weight of it didn't help. Whereas on this one, uh, she's, even though it's a heavier bike, she still finds it much easier to control. Um, what I'm going to do, I was going to put another clip in. Oh yeah, taking the battery off, that's, um, it's awkward, a little bit awkward. There's a key there. You use a key in there. And all you do is you rotate the key to the left a little bit and pop the battery up. The problem is, it's a heavy battery and it, it doesn't jam in place, but it's a good fit, let's say. So you've got one hand, your right hand, if you like, you've got your left hand holding the key here and your right hand down there, you've got to pull the thing up. Um, you know, unless you're very strong, it's, it's quite difficult. So what I try and do is give it a quick flip. It slides forward and then it pulls, lifts off. And it tells you that in the drawing there. You, you cannot angle it up because you'll break the pins if you do that. Um, so anyway, there's a mechanism there that, that should stop you from doing that. And when you put it on, again, you put it on high and slide it down and it just clicks in place nicely. But so getting that battery off is just a little bit awkward. It takes about six hours to charge it. Uh, and you should really f fully charge it um, if you can because it's one of those you know, lithium batteries and they're, they're, they're computer controlled how they charge. The, the only awkward thing is this, this little bit of rubber here which is uh, so awkward to get it back in again, I don't know why. This is a, a short insertion just to show you how to remove the battery. I've just charged it. Um, as I said before this thing's awfully awkward to get back in again. So it's just a socket in there. there go. Anyway, key in. Turn it all the way to the left. Get your hand underneath and that's the best way to do it. Then you can release. The battery comes straight off. Now, that's the mechanism. Oh, let me show you the mechanism. There's the mechanism there. Just pulls that pin down. That's it. And you can see by the shape of that there that the battery locks into it. Uh, those rubber straps are for that. Mud guard, don't really interfere with anything. And there's the connectors there. Very straightforward. And all the electrics are inside there. Um, the battery itself, it's quite a heavy thing. I'd say two and a half kilograms. This is it. There's an interesting security tape here as that comes off or if you take it off then uh, the battery warranty is invalid it's the most ridiculous thing ever it doesn't stick I mean, you can glue it on or do something like that it probably looks suspicious um, it'll cover up that there's, there's a product number there not the serial number I'll cover up the serial number there uh, that's the product number on the right upside down naturally um, and that's all there is to it really, because there's all the fittings at the bottom there. And that's it, let's pop it back on again. Yeah, it's very straightforward. Wonderful camera work here, I'm doing this on my own of course. You don't need the key to put it back in. So, position it roughly in place. In to the frame first. It's 
never normally so awkward. Why it is now, I don't know. That's it. Push in and down. And there you go, that's the battery bit. Back to the main feature. Um, but anyway, I bought this from Halfords uh, and our other one. I bought all my bikes from Halfords. Uh, one of them I made up myself. Uh, the others I've had done. Because once you spend more than about 250 quid, they do it free anyway. Set your bike up for you. Um, the beauty of this care package that we got, not only can you walk into any Halfords without your receipt or anything else, you just tell them who you are, they've got the bike there, and they do whatever they can for you. And they're extremely friendly. They're, they're, they're incredibly good staff. I can't recommend them highly enough. Um, the the, uh, the care package itself includes a, a free service which um, is worth about 50 quid uh, what the guy said to me when he was fixing the tire there he said bring it in after you've done about a thousand miles because by then your chain might need changing now you only pay for labor yes so you do not pay for labor on these things you only pay for parts so he fitted a new inner tube for me and I paid for that three pound sixty because it was a discount uh, you get a discount of ten percent on everything you buy with this care package the chain would uh, be about 10 quid and cost me about 8 quid, uh, but it'd be fitted free. I mean, you know, all these jobs you can do yourself, really. But uh, the thing with it, if one of the guys at Halfords does it and there's something else that needs looking at, he's going to spot it. Or you can have a quick look while you're there. So um, th these guys are doing it all the time. Anything that, st anything that sticks out um, is a little bit odd. They will spot uh, and they give it a good check while they're there. So you can see the gears there. Uh, so that's me that's the review that's the crossfire e it's an extremely good bike uh, i will have a fourth crossfire more than likely uh, together with my fiance that's five bikes we bought from halfords in the past few years and uh, at the moment i can't see any reason to go anywhere else um, and this is a fantastic bike we've done i say nearly 500 miles on this i've done now uh, we go out with a group at the weekends and sometimes on a thursday We've done everywhere, you know, North Wales, uh, Will Coastline, parts of Middlewich, Chester. And the beauty about having an electric bike is you, you have a fantastic ride, you need to 20 miles or more. And it's the last few miles, isn't it? You know, getting back to the start point, you put all that effort in just to get there. And it kind of takes some of the fun out of the ride because it's such hard work, especially if you the last bit's on an incline as well. Um, but with this, you get back totally refreshed, you've had a fantastic time, you might have stopped at a cafe or a pub on the way, depending on who's in our group. Um, and it's just so enjoyable. We left yesterday very early to get to uh, North Wales, it was at Pensarn, um, near Abergelly. And we all left around about 11ish to go down to Landudno. We had something you know, nice, you know, nice to eat in the pub over there. Well, I was sitting outside the pub. The weather was fantastic. Um, the, the scenery up there is incredible. You can see Landudno and um, you know the Orm and Malvern, Malvern and Anglesey in the background. Uh, and it was just a fantastic day. So um, we got back, uh, had an ice cream, jumped in the car. At which point you suddenly felt tired. <laughs> beautifully hot day but the bike ride itself none of it was oh no we still got that to do it was just fantastic it takes all the all of the hassle away from it uh, and just gets you back and you, you just enjoy your day that mud guard there by the way that mud flap um, that was part of a very cheap pair uh, the back one I can't fit on there so I left that on the other bike um, you can get full mud guards for them my partner's got those on hers uh, but that's that's fine for me. The the rack at the back there, which again came from the old bike, uh, that that takes up any of the splashing really before it gets to your back. And this one here protects the the battery and everything else, uh, and most of your your, your knees I think. Um, I did so much in the previous video that I had no sound with it before I had to do it again. I mentioned this I think in that one. This this cracky little pump. I may do an accessories thing. Uh, this pump does Schrader and Presto and screws and pulls out there. Um, and it's really good actually, very compact as well. So I might do one on accessories at some point. But anyway, if you're still here now, uh, why? <laughs> All I've done is waffle for ages. So thanks for listening uh, and I hope you find this useful. Uh, if you're thinking of an e-bike, I would definitely go ahead and do it. And if you're thinking, you know, what what would be a good quality bike? Well, do you really need a three thousand pound bike? 
Do you just want to enjoy going out for a ride? Do you want reliability? Do you want a good frame? Do you want something that, that is a good all-rounder? That's not high resistance riding on the road, gets you there and is reliable once you figure out how the battery works properly. Then um, I personally can't recommend Carrera highly enough. And where would you buy it from? I've never had a bad service from Halfords ever, even with cars and things. It's you know it's it's always an incredibly good service. So I would always go there. Uh, anyway, that's enough now. It's a 31-minute video that was incredibly long. So thank you very much for listening. Goodbye for now.